Welcome back to my fellow shop rats. Today here in the shop, we're back on the Golden Mullet Project. Now we're not working directly on the vehicle per se, but we've got a load of something coming here real soon. And oh, there he is, as a matter of fact, my buddy Chris is just pulling in the driveway right now. So uh, let's get you spun around right after the show intro and we'll see what's going on. I'm Mike, this is My Car Shop. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn, Bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. He's heading right out to the storage building. <laughs> Look at the back of that van. Woo something heavy in there. Let's go see what he's got. Man, oh man. Hey, man. Good to see you. you. Guys, remember Chris? He's been here many times before, so uh, you got a load of something here for yeah, us. I got a big load of something here. Huh? Uh, if I got my weights right, this is about, uh, about 12 to 1400 pounds of steel. And this is what I was figuring we'd make your frame table out of. These are the columns and supports and all the structure. Uh, all that stuff's for my nephew. But, um, all this stuff is all the supports and legs and everything for a metal stock rack. Oh, and I got one more thing for you. Hang okay. on. I don't know. Uh oh, it's in a trick or treat bag. Yeah. This is a pint bottle of scallion oil and a pint bottle of habanero oil. Oh. That's the habanero right there. That's that's the stuff that eats through glass. And this is scallion oil. I bet you'll love that. So, some of you know I make my own habanero oil. Well, he's where I learned how to make it, but he still makes it for me because when he makes it, it's better than when I make it. So, this will literally melt. We can use that to de rust the metal. Yeah, we could. <laughs> okay, well, let's get some gloves and we'll uh, start putting stuff in the building here because we're just going to store it in the storage shed for now. So. big metal and we'll take you out there and just do a little you know video of that itself is to set up in the shop here once we have things arranged differently and the challengers off the rotisserie and well just stuff um, we are going to build a chassis table which is a perfectly flat table um, to weld stanchions onto and then begin welding the frame together for the golden mullet and so that's what the blueprint that you saw in the last episode on this project was all about uh, is me starting to design that frame uh starting to design the frame design yeah 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 so uh, we're gonna get this box tube unloaded here squirrel it away this, this stuff isn't rusty and i want to keep it fairly clean because of what it's going to be used for that roof leaks like a sieve but that's been sitting outside for years so it was just some old some old scrap that my company needed to get rid of and i was happy to take it and in kind of the spirit of the channel that's the whole point is you keep an eye out for what you can see that would do the job and grab it when you can, when it's free and it's only for the effort of picking it up and putting it in the van and driving it up there. That saved 
thousands of dollars. If we'd had to buy that material, I wouldn't even begin to know what it would cost to, to buy all of that to make that chassis table. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you to your company. I won't mention the name. <laughs> oh, and I brought along uh, two other things. Hang on. You're okay. talking about the perfectly flat and level. Hang on okay. just a second. <laughs> Oops, <sure. laughs> I don't know. It's a laser level. So with the little tripod here, we can set it up, and when it's all turned on, it casts a vertical and a horizontal line that we can turn around in a circle so we can measure up from each of the four, actually six junction points, the four corners in the center, and make sure that our table is perfectly level all the way across. And this Some people might already know what this is. This is a machinist level that takes us down to five ten thousandths of an inch per foot. So we get it roughed in with this. We can balance it out with this, double check with this, make sure everything is nice and level and flat and true. So we can be more accurate than you would ever need on an automotive frame. Yeah, we're looking at plus or minus an eighth of an inch, basically. Well, plus or minus a sixteenth, so and overall inch of if we were doing GD and T. And between these two and a bunch of work and a bunch of playing, I bet we can get down within, within probably fifty or hundred thousands. Yeah. Easy, get down lower, less, to less of a value than what you'd ever need for anything like a frame. So once you start building, you can just build. And you don't have to worry about anything flat and level and true. You can go right off that base and make sure that everything is just dimensionally up from each point, each datum, right from your datum line. You can measure each individual point accurately and have make sure that everything is straight and true in all directions. I want to just elaborate on a little bit that you mentioned is measuring up from the table, basically, which is the datum. In this shop, we will build that thing perfectly true and level but this floor is not perfectly true and level, and we're going to build this with um, pivoting casters to move it around if we need to. So that it may be sitting like this in the shop, but because we know we built that table perfectly flat, all we have to do is measure anywhere on it, and we will know that, it, that our, our frame will be square. And if for some reason it needed to move with the laser level, you could always go back and double check that you're flat right. and true and level. Right. And the, the width on that line is very small, so you'd be able to get it back within within thousands of what it originally was if you needed to move it. Yeah, and that, that's kind of my thinking. It's probably going to be, it'll either be where the Challenger is or where the Duster is. Both of those floors are pretty bad. It's better over there, which is where I'm leaning towards. But um, if we need to move it out of there, we could do some work on it somewhere else and then put it back basically in place and double check things to make sure nothing twisted. So. And I'll keep, uh, I'll keep an eye out for other steel scrap stuff and we can build basically posts. Yeah with adjust, adjusto nuts in the middle so you could adjust it up or down wherever it's at. Something you can put a wrench on and dial yep. it right in yep. until everything is flat, level, and true. In the ideal world, we would put it in place and never move it, but nothing in this barn is ideal. So it's a matter of relativity, really. It's the theory of relativity that no matter how twisted it is, relatively, it's square to the table. We were just talking about, this is remnants from? From Alro, Alro Metals Plus. Uh, Alro Steel is headquartered where I live, and Al Glick years ago started Metals Plus as an outlet to give people who need steel a place to get it. This is $1.25 a pound to buy it in remnant form, mm -hmm. and this is these are longer sticks than you'd ever need for a frame, but this would be, if you bought this off the prime stock rack, this would be close to $800 worth of steel right now, mm -hmm. and I'm getting it for $1.25 a pound. This is... Uh, Maybe about uh, yeah, about forty foot worth of steel. Mm -hmm. Forty foot of two by three by quarter wall, which is way overkill for what we're building, but that's what we want. Hint, hint. We saved about between five and six hundred dollars by buying remnants. And it's just it's when you walk in there, it's what they've got. Yep. And you just keep going back, and they have this piece, they have that piece. Oh, they have six of them. Grab as many as you need. Yep. So we had, I think you had two trips to get this, right? You got one stick. Yeah, uh, you, you texted me and I said, well, I wasn't sure what I wanted, so you got one, and then I changed my mind, and then you went back and ended up getting four more. They, they didn't have it that time. I came back two or three days later, and they had it there. Yeah. I pick up steel there all the time, a, a tool steel or, or quarter wall or whatever I'm building. I can generally find a piece of what I need or something I can cut into what I need. And it's a, 
it's a it's a godsend to have a place like. Oh yeah, yeah, because the Al Rose deal in, in Sag or Bay City doesn't have that option that I know of. So uh, they may have a remnant rack, but it's not like what you're dealing with. It's all it's all probably prime stock, and yeah. that's that's custom made to yep. that dimension. That that's where I get most of my sheet metal until you started getting it for me down there because it's it's literally. 50 to 75 percent cheaper. So. And there might be a ruffle in it, or it may be it, it's remnants. It was a, a cut off piece. It might be an oddball gauge. Yeah, that, that 19 nobody, gauge piece of yeah. three by 12 or whatever you bought. That, you know, an oddball gauge that nobody wants. But but for somebody who can take the extra couple of thousands in a frame wall, it's it's great stuff. Yep. Yep. So you can see it's like this C channel type stuff. Those are the legs. Those yep. were built on to be the horizontal supports at the base. Right, which we may not use those legs. The main thing we're going to use, of course, is these, the lengths to build the table itself. Actually, I always figure in those legs might be braces in between, or if you want to keep them as legs, there's other steel there. There's box tube and channel that could be used to make the braces okay. in between. And if you keep those, we might be able to build you a great big table off to the side mm -hmm. that you could adjust anywhere from zero to eight foot. We've got those aluminum legs too. He's getting romanticized or serenaded there. So. Anyway, this is all. Of, oops, this is all of that. And uh, just walked into it. This is an old chicken coop, so I just walked into the uh, chicken roost. But anyway, I wanted you to get a, a good close look. There is. Uh, I, I said I can't even fathom what this steel would cost well, if I'd, we had to buy all this. I'd hate to think, especially now. It's I bet it's ten grand. I bet it would, wouldn't surprise me at all. Now those are those legs or the uprights are actually C channel that's been welded together and then drilled with all the holes, so everything bolts together and you can adjust everything up and down any place you need. As a single one-sided stock rack, it's good for 7,000 pounds, and if you did a double-sided stock rack at eight foot, I believe this would hold 35,000 pounds. So hopefully, the car doesn't weigh that much. Hopefully, <laughs> but it's meant to hold an incredible amount of weight just by its design. So. It ought to certainly be solid enough to make uh, make exactly what you need for a table. Yep. Be able to bolt everything together and still be able to move it around. Each individual support is about 100 pounds. So it's still something that can be moved on casters without right. breaking an ankle. That's why I'm talking about the pivot caster. So you, that they're, it sits on its legs and then you lever them down and they, they pick the whole thing up and you can just roll it around and then put it down where you go. And then adjustable in all the corners. And, 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 